so as in a posted video response to the DDR uh, friends campaign uh, I too have a DDR story my name is Nick some call me Casey some call me Dante uh, I, st I first played DDR in summer of 99 may have been 98 I know it first came out when I started playing it or when I first time I played it our local arcade had I think it was just the first American mix and uh a buddy of mine talked me into trying it and uh, we both ended up failing the first song and uh, from there we just went about our ways you know didn't we didn't really uh, didn't really show well, I didn't really show a whole lot of interest in it my friend showed interest in to the music aspect of it because he liked some of the stuff that was on it and me on the other hand I really wasn't into that kind of music at the time and uh, really didn't have any interest in the game well a couple years went by and uh, I really didn't tr because after that the DDR machine not, not too far after that, that DDR machine was a uh, Either I didn't sit and pay attention, but I don't think it was there for a while. And I uh, really didn't notice it being there till Extreme rolled around. And uh, that's when uh, I, I gave it another try. My buddy, my same buddy of mine talked to me and said, hey, why don't you try it again? And uh, he's actually, and by this point, he's he's bought some of the home versions and played so he he started out on on like light or something and uh... I was one of the ones at the arcade to actually start out on beginner and uh... all of my schooling was from the arcade I uh... I never owned the home version until maybe recently the first home DDR mix I've ever bought was Supernova and uh, I didn't even buy it till after it was out for a couple months uh, <clears throat> and uh but anyway back to the arcade I've I met, I met people I met a lot of friends a lot of, a lot of my friends I know that I didn't know from school I met at the arcade and uh I still talked to a good bit of them. A couple of them I ain't seen since since the machine was taken out, and uh, I'll get to that here in a minute. But uh, we used to go hang out. We used to. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> every time the weekend would roll around, Friday to Sunday, from when I punched out. Friday, if I was on day turn, from when I'd punch out at 3 o'clock, get home, get a shower, and grab something quick to eat, I would be out the door, down at my buddy's house, I'd pick him up, and uh, from there we'd head to the mall arcade, and uh, we'd play, we'd go get in line, we'd play serious for a while, then we'd take a break, and we'd go get something to drink or something to eat if we was hungry or uh, go check on stuff we might want to buy uh, my friend of mine he uh, he met his girlfriend his current girlfriend playing the game they've been together for about three years they're still together uh, me on the other hand I uh, I didn't meet no one. I I always still continue to be the oddball, or or when I did start getting better, 
I uh, I always I used to be a showboat because I mean I I played beginner for a while. Then when I finally made the move to light, I was on light for quite a while. And uh, then when I finally moved to standard, I, I played it for a little while. And then I decided that uh, I wanted to uh, be different. I wanted to uh, have my own, what I would consider, claim to fame. Because where everyone was good on singles in my area, I never seen no one play double pad. And uh, at the time, I mean, I didn't have broadband. I had dial up. I used to go download the videos from like. Uh, from like DDR Freak and uh, I used to see video these people playing double pad and it looked fun so uh, that's when uh, I went in one day put in the money and at the time you, know, you, you had to pay for two games just to play both pads so I did that and uh, the lowest level we could start on was light I stayed on light for a while till I felt confident. I moved up to standard. And by the time I moved up to standard on doubles, that's when I was moving up to heavy on singles. And then from there, about the time I moved up to heavy on doubles, I was playing some of the Oni courses on singles and a couple Oni doubles. And, uh,. At about that point, you know, we was getting pretty good, and uh, we was ready. We, we we was pretty much ready to for another machine. We we pretty much learned all we could from from extreme, and uh, at that point, that arcade they they decided not to renew their uh, contract with. Uh, the local mall and uh, they uh, just closed the doors and at that point I was I was shot I, I I didn't know what else to do I I went to message board said hey where's I'm looking for a local machine and I couldn't get no feedback and uh, and I was more or less I more or less thought that something that I came to enjoy was was took away from me and uh, then we drove then we started driving about an hour to another mall to that local arcade to see if they had a machine well they had a machine but it it wasn't DDR it was the pump it up perfect collection and uh, I forget which part what version of the collection it was we played it a couple of times I enjoyed it it took me a while to get used to it but the machine you really couldn't hear it I, I knew that there's more to it and then I decided I wasn't gonna drive an hour to play a game that was in such bad shape and about six months later another arcade started moving in to the empty arcade area in the mall and they had and I seen them bring in machines and at first I thought they were bringing DDR machines in but in fact they were bringing pump it up machines well I didn't touch them for a while mainly because I was intimidated because when I played them at the other location I, I failed. I failed like the second song. I'd, I'd pass the first song and fail the second. And uh, also not be, because the mix is because we had the OBG3. That's what we got. And uh, that wasn't tra the only thing that was translated was the menus. None of the uh, none of the song selects was tra translated and the menu system was funky and I didn't really know the mods so 
I left him alone and uh, played it for a while or no when I finally started playing I started out on normal and uh, never got to play the non-stops that's the one thing I miss because after that then we got Premiere 2 and then from there we played Premiere that's when I pretty much started playing it serious is once we got Premiere 2 and uh, then from there we uh, a buddy, another buddy of mine that I met from playing Pump It Up he uh, he drove to Pittsburgh to this other arcade and said hey you know they have a XC2 machine so we planned a road trip and I knew of Exceed I mean when I started playing when I started playing Premiere 2 heavy I started digging up and to find out what mixes said hey you know let's get an Exceed well that never happened and then so someone said hey I know it was an Exceed 2 so we all got together we went up to this other arcade and uh, when we got there they upgraded their X2 to zero and uh, that was a whole new experience you know it was a new game when I f first started playing it and I was blown away I enjoyed it and now that arcade they still haven't upgraded theirs to NX or Pro or whatever but uh, to get back on topic here they uh, a buddy of mine that I knew from playing DDR with few years ago he told me that he went to a mall or an, a, a theater that was about 45 minutes to an hour away from where we live saying that hey they, they have our old extreme machine they just got our old scores on this and that well last weekend I wanted to go see if it's our old machine because there was a lot of history there a lot of friends was made a lot of friends was lost and uh, a lot of first was done on that machine and uh, I, wa I wanted to go see it just just to see if I uh, kinda like rem remembrance you know like the final goodbye that none of us got to say but uh, I got there. I had to pay for the movie in order to get in first. Walked in there, looked at the machine. The cabinet itself, it, it could be, it could very well be our old machine because it's, it's got some of the problems that our machine had before the arcade closed, and. Uh, it's also got the rep the aftermarket replacement panels that look funky, but but the old scores that he claimed he seen on there, they was gone. The unlocks were still there, we, all the songs are still unlocked, but the scores were waived. But uh, I, I think I'm gonna leave it at this. I really think if if I wouldn't have uh, if I wouldn't have started playing DDR, I probably would have never met half the people I know. I, I would have never had I would have never had the confidence to do some of the stuff I've done. I uh, I, I would have never. I uh, I would have been a different person. I really would have been. I would have been the same depressed kid I always was, and uh, it's it's kind of weird to get this emotional over a game. But when something like that changes your life so much, you no matter no matter what you. 
you, you can't express it. You, you try, and it just is something that'll never be that'll never replace any experience I ever have. It will always it will always be that one. It will always be in the background where you're like, hey, remember back in. In 2002, 2003, when we used to blow our paychecks playing the game, you know that will be something that that I'll laugh about and and I'll always remember. And same way with same way with uh, in the groove people and with the dance dance revolution people and the pump it up people and and even the pump pro people because there, there's even there's even and, and it blows my mind because there's even some pe hardcore pump it up people that think pro is not pump but we all have our own opinions and we all follow our own paths and it's really the developers of the games that are the ones that are trying to make us happy and uh, as long as they continue to do their job I, I think they'll always find a fan base for what they're doing um, this is it for now